Hello everyone, this is Ganapati and today I am going to talk about how banking has changed India and how it is more than just a place where you save money. India's banking landscape has undergone tremendous changes shaped by key historic events that redefined the country's economic future. Among the institutions that have stood the test of time, the State Bank of India holds a special place. From its roots as the Bank of Madras to becoming the country's largest public sector bank, SBI has played a vital role in India's economic evolution especially during the pivotal periods of economic liberalization. But how did we get here? How did a colonial bank become the driving force behind financial inclusion and digital banking? Today, we'll explore this journey through key historical events and economic transformations. In the early 19th century, British India saw the establishment of the presidency banks, the Bank of Calcutta in 1806, followed by the Bank of Bombay in 1840 and the Bank of Madras in 1843. These banks were set up to finance the colonial economy, primarily benefiting British trade and commerce in India. In 1921, these banks were merged together to form what is known as the Imperial Banks. While this move consolidated financial power, the focus remained on British business interests, excluding large segments of the Indian population, especially rural and agricultural sectors. The concentration of the banking in urban centres limited economic opportunities in rural areas, contributing to uneven development. The Imperial Bank acted as both a commercial and a quasi-central bank. After independence, India's economy was structured as a mixed economy, with a strong emphasis on the public sector driving industrialization and social equity. However, the banking sector was largely under private control and the rural areas remained underserved. In 1955, under Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru's socialist vision, the government nationalized the Imperial Bank of India, renaming it the State Bank of India. The purpose was clear to use SBA as a tool to extend banking services to the rural heartlands and ensure the government had control over critical financial institutions. This decision expanded the bank's reach into previously neglected rural areas. SBA was tasked with financing agriculture, rural industries and small-scale businesses. It played a pivotal role in government's five-year plans which aimed to accelerate economic development. After the nationalization, SBA took the monumental task of expanding its services to rural areas. In the 1960s, it opened thousands of branches in towns and villages, ensuring that even remote regions had access to formal banking. The Green Revolution in the 1960s, which introduced high yield variety seeds, fertilizers and irrigation techniques, played a significant role in increasing agriculture productivity in India. However, this revolution was only possible because of the finance provided by the State Bank of India. SBI's role in financing the Green Revolution transformed India from a fruit deficit country to an agricultural populous and surplus country in the world. This period marked a significant shift in India's economic landscape, with agriculture taking a leading role in growth. By the late 1980s, India was grappling with a balance of payment crisis exacerbated by the high fiscal deficits, low foreign exchange reserves and a lack of competitiveness in global markets. The country was on the brink of economic collapse. In 1991, Prime Minister P. V. Narasimha Rao and Finance Minister Manmohan Singh initiated sweeping economic reforms that opened up India's economy to the world. The reforms included trade liberalization, deregularization and the encouragement of foreign investment. The State Bank of India played a crucial role during this period by providing trade finance to exporters, offering credit to emerging industries and facilitating foreign exchange transactions. As the Indian economy liberalized, SBI became a lifeline for businesses seeking to integrate into global markets. India's GDP started rising. The liberalization of the 1990s unleashed a wave of industrial expansion and global trade. With import barriers reduced and markets opening up, Indian industries required a substantial financial banking to compete this internationally. The FERA Act was amended in 1993, making it easier for Indian companies to participate in global trade. SBI with its vast resources and branch network provided essential trade finance helping Indian businesses tap into global markets. The reforms led to the exponential growth of sectors like IT, textiles and pharmaceuticals. SBI's ability to provide capital and credit helped Indian companies expand internationally. This period also marked a significant rise in foreign direct investment. As India globalized, so did the State Bank of India. SBI began establishing branches in key global financial hubs to cater to the non needs of non-residential Indians and facilitate cross-border trade. In the early 2000s, India saw a boom in remittances with NRI sending money back home. 
SBI's NRI banking services became a vital conduit for these remittances, particularly from the countries like USA, UK and the Middle East. Remittances became a significant source of foreign exchange for India and SBI played a crucial role in ensuring the smooth flow of these funds. By establishing a global presence, SBI was not only able to serve NRIs but also create new opportunities for Indian businesses which are looking to expand globally. Today, more than $80 billion are being pumped into the economy by SBI's transfers. With the rise of digital technology, SBI embarked on a journey to modernize its services and stay competitive in an increasingly digital world. The bank embraced core banking solutions, allowing customers to access services from any branch. In 2017, SBI launched the YONO, You Only Need One app, a comprehensive platform that combined banking, shopping and lifestyle services in one app. This marked a shift towards digital banking and the fintech, uh, fintech, which is a financial technology. The introduction of YONO not only made the banking more accessible to millions of Indians, but it also pushed SBI as a leader in the fintech space. By embracing digital solutions, SBI was able to reduce operational costs, reach a wider customer base and contribute to digital India. Financial inclusion remains one of the biggest challenges in India. To address this, the government launched the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dol Dan Yojana in 2014, aimed at ensuring that every Indian has access to a bank. Under PMJDY, SBI opened millions of accounts, making it the single largest contributor to the scheme. The bank leveraged its extensive branch network to reach even the most remote villages. By bringing millions of unbanked citizens into the formal banking system, SBI played a crucial and critical role in expanding access to credit, insurance and social welfare schemes. Financial inclusion has had far-reaching impacts on poverty reduction and economic empowerment, particularly for the rural and marginalized communities. First, banking is essential for economic growth. It provides the financial infrastructure that businesses need to thrive. From startups seeking loans to established companies managing payroll, banks facilitate transactions that keep the economy moving. A strong banking system encourages investment and innovation which are vital for job creation and overall prosperity. But banking does more than just support businesses. It also mirrors the political climate of a country. For instance, a stable political environment often leads to a strong banking system which in turn fosters public confidence. When people trust their banks, they are more likely to save and invest, fueling economic growth. Conversely, in countries with political instability, banks may struggle. People withdraw their savings, investment declines, and the economy suffers. The ramifications of this relationship are profound. A shaky political situation can lead to a currency devaluation affecting everything from inflation rates to international trade. Countries with robust banking regulations often fare better during crisis as they can manage risk more effectively and maintain public confidence. Moreover, the policies implemented by governments play a significant role in shaping the banking sector. Regulations can encourage transparency and stability, while lax policies can lead to corruption and financial crisis. Thus, the relationship between banking and politics isn't just cyclical, it's dynamic, influencing everything from economic health to social equity. Here we saw how SBI has been coming from a colonial past to the modern state of India where it is essential for every householder. Banking is not merely a backdrop to our economy, it's a reflection of our political landscape and a driver of economic stability. A resilient banking system empowers citizens, fuels innovations and sustains growth. So let's recognize the importance of banking, not just as a financial tool, but as a cornerstone of our society. So I would like to conclude my presentation today by stating that even though it started for a different intention, the Bank of Madras, which is now the State Bank of India, has helped each and every Indian achieve their financial goals. However, there are still policies which need to be amended. There are still uh, you know, people who need to be included financially. However, we are getting there through rapid digitalization and access of uh, internet as well as the other facilities which are driving towards digital India. Thank you for tuning in.